Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your July reading. I have Spy Game playing in the background. Brad Pitt is a Sag and it's kind of like Spy Game this month a little bit, so let's talk about it. Okay, July. Let's go with my notes here and let's do astrology first and then I will put the camera overhead so you can see me shuffle the cards and lay them out. And we can look at the cards together and then the full in-depth analysis of the cards will be in the extended. Okay, so the heat's turned up. If you were part of something either very deep or something that was transitory and it all of a sudden just fizzled out and you're not really sure what happened, that whatever it was is rekindled and comes back around. So the best way to deal with this is to do the opposite of what you did last time. Do not run after it, do not chase it, do not become infatuated with it, whatever it is that's coming back around, let it do so of its own free will. And when it does so, do not in any way fasten yourself to it. Let it be there. If it wants to be there, great. If it doesn't want to be there, um, you know, also that's a choice. That You're not going to try to control this because either this is something that you need to continue to learn something from and heal from and move forward from, or it's something that naturally is rekindling and there is a real affinity between two people there. So either way, your participation is not necessary is what I'm saying. So keep your cool and to a certain extent, keep your distance. Let the mutual heat of whatever is happening between you pull you along and don't make any special effort to do so, okay? so. Uh, one of the things that they show in Spy Game over and over again is that when one of the CIA operatives wants something, instead of just coming out and saying it, they actually walk away. And then after saying something that's kind of tempting and inviting, they walk away and have the other person kind of come after them and make the other person feel like it's their idea. Um, so you can you, take that, take that and kind of think over that in July. What is it that you want and what is the best way to get it? Because I know how direct you are. And of course, it's a wonderful aspect of your personality. It's a defining characteristic, right? Let's be honest. But it's not that this is subterfuge. It's not that this is not direct. Sometimes people need to feel like they're the ones in control. And until they feel like they're making their own decisions and they're the ones who are having that agency to, to choose to do that or choose to come after you or choose to hit you up or choose until they feel like they're in charge of that, they're not really comfortable. So give them that space. If you're not situated in terms of this connection with whomever it is, whether it's casual or not, by July 28th, then wait and leave it alone until November because Jupiter goes retrograde on July 28th. And then it's a time of really looking at yourself and it's not about couples, it's not about getting into a couple, it, it, then it becomes a solitary enterprise for a few months. July 5th, let's move back a little bit, July 5th, Mars enters Taurus. And for you, money picks up in a really nice, comfortable way. It's not too fast, but it's also rooted in something that you really love to do. You're finding more and more that things in your, let's say, day job are working out so you can have this other business, so you can continue to pursue what you wanna do. You're seeing how certain things are falling into place without you doing anything. And that's a big theme for you this month is having a lot come to you, but not really doing much to get it, except being in that receptive energy and being very affirming of what's coming to you. Yeah, of course this is happening for me. Thank God I'm very lucky, I'm very grateful, I'm very humble, but yeah, you know, I do deserve good things and I do deserve this. So we wanna keep that energy. And when Mars moves into Taurus and you're taking the right initiatives and you're taking the right actions and you're really getting into these hobbies and you're wanting more and more to get into business, realize that that's going to be punctuated even more between the 27th of July and August 11th when you have that Uranus and North Node conjunction going on. So everything you're feeling when Mars moves into Taurus about money and career and all this charisma and energy you have and enthusiasm and direction and you're just so excited, it gets even more ramped up for you when this Uranus North Node conjunction happens, which is which is interesting because for so much of the Zodiac, it's not a pleasant thing, but for you, it's quite wonderful. Um, and you love it and it keeps you in a good mood and you have all these beautiful things 
what the conjunction does for you is it brings all these things together that have kind of been hanging in your consciousness here and there. Friends you know that you know would love each other and should meet or some sort of business opportunity over here and someone you would love to do that business with over here and those two things have never kind of collided the way they should. There's all these open tabs, if you will. And then in late July, you feel them connecting and it's so satisfying. And it's a really wonderful time because there's these unusual, unusual opportunities that are coming across your table and you're taking them in stride and you're quite excited about them because by the end of the month, you're getting used to the fact that you don't have to be proactive and make things happen right now and things are happening for you. So when these opportunities come across you, you're just like, of course this is happening and of course I'm being offered this and I would love to do it, right? But it's not, you know, your doing. So when we are in this space and we're feeling very receptive and we're feeling obviously very abundant because that's what receptivity brings you, you do have a tendency to overspend. You can be um, very indulgent with others, with your friends, with your family, with yourself. So just be a little bit careful about how much you're spending because that Jupiter energy can get on top of you, okay? So you, okay, let's see. So we just wanna be smart is what I wanted to say about that. We just wanna be smart. Now, here's something that's a little bit interesting. One of the things that you may find that you would like to eradicate in July is anything that you're doing that you're ashamed of that you don't want people to know about, whether it's the way you're eating at home when you're by yourself or whatever you're in, whatever vices you're indulging in, whatever it is that you're doing that you're embarrassed about that you wouldn't want anyone to know about. This is a bit Calvinist of me. Um, I don't know if you know much about the Calvinist, you know, Calvinist in, in theory, Calvinism the way you can kind of boil it down to something that's um, like a metaphor that's easy to understand is like not having curtains because you're not supposed to be doing anything that no one's supposed to be, able, no one should not see, you know. Um, so it is like that in a way, but uh, so big, huge windows like in Amsterdam, you know, no curtains. Um, but there are things that I think that you would like to not do. And in July, it's not that you feel exposed or anything and you feel like you shouldn't do those things anymore you just you have this push inside you of wanting to get clean whatever that means you know and you've had it for a while now years in fact and you've gone very far in your pursuits but now it's come to a more emotional thing now it's you want to be clean in deeper ways so if you find yourself um wanting to get rid of some habits that are embarrassing or would be humiliating if anyone knew about it, this is the perfect time to do it. Okay. And it's holding you back, you know? It's stuff that part of why it might be embarrassing you is because you know it's holding you back and you know that if anyone else knew you, they'd be like, that's what's holding you back. And you'd be like, yeah, I know. That thing, don't do that thing anymore. Okay, physical fitness keeps your mind stable and it'll keep you from, well, it'll keep you, physical fitness will keep you from the things that you think work is gonna keep you from. Okay, so let me put it to you like this. You think that maybe work will keep you from obsessing about somebody or thinking about someone from the past or missing the heat of being with someone or perhaps a missed opportunity, a friend that betrayed you, whatever's on your mind, you think that work is gonna keep you from thinking about it and it's not, it's just gonna compound it and make it worse because you're repressing it and sublimating it. Instead, what you wanna do is work out. Instead, what you wanna do is go out and take a walk or you know, swim or whatever your body allows for without stressing yourself out. Physically move yourself around and it will do wonders for you. Do not go into a space of workaholic you know, drive just because things maybe aren't going the way that you want them to in some other aspect of your life because those other aspects obviously in July are undergoing some deep healing. So we don't want to lose ourselves in something where we don't, you know, care about how we eat or care about how much we sleep or, you know, when we start to neglect ourselves, like it is very common when things don't go your way to kind of punish yourself by neglecting yourself if that's the pattern that you were raised with. And we just don't want to do that because if things, <clears throat> excuse me, if things aren't going your way right now, especially romantically, right? You have to understand that the reason they aren't going the way they should be going the way you think they should be going is because for one reason or another that person right now is not good for you and maybe you're not the type of person that could walk away from that so 
it's time to allow and receive and watch these beautiful connections and have your kid in a candy store moment where all those tabs that are open start to make sense and connect. And then give yourself the time and give yourself the space to rest and heal and not push anything and see what naturally comes to you. And if it doesn't come back now, it comes back around inshallah in November. But either way, there's nothing out there that you need to convince or pursue to be yours. What's written for you is for you and only for you. And you can run from it forever, but it'll still find you. And what's not for you could be sitting right next to you and still not be yours. So don't get caught in this race. You like to run? Run because you like to run, Sagittarius, not because you need a race. You don't need the excuse of a race to run. You can just go be free. Love you. Let's look at these cards and shuffle some cards. Let's see. Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to your July reading. The astrology part of this reading has been up on Patreon for about four days. And welcome to the tarot part. All right, first up, Ten of Pentacles. No matter how dire you think it seems, no matter how confusing love may be, love, relationships, connections, that long-term love that you're like, it doesn't even exist. No matter how confusing it may seem, it's there. And it's real. And even though right now in the moment, it might all seem very, very confusing. July has some pretty cool lessons for you. By the time we get to the end, you're in this North Node conjunction. You're liking how things are flowing. You're good with it. Mutable fire. Kind of like water. It can flow, you know? So, what do you need to know? In this time of tumult where people come and go out of your life, but somehow you know everything's going to be all right. Well, that's exactly it. Somehow you know. The thing about the High Priestess, the most beautiful thing about this card, is that it asks you to go back. It asks you to go back to a version of yourself, perhaps, that you were when you were a child. When you found it very easy to believe yourself not just believe in yourself but believe yourself believe your gut you know before all the terrible shit happens to us in life and we decide that maybe that voice isn't all that accurate because it's led you down some weird roads right well, maybe that voice leads you down every road it leads you down because that's exactly the road for you. Just like this kind of confusing winding road is exactly for you right now. Umber, this doesn't help. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I get it. I know. But what's the lesson? That Ten of Pentacles is first. You know, that fell out on its own. I didn't do that. So what's the lesson? Yes, it's confusing. Yes, trust your gut. Why does this come up? This only comes up when you're absolutely not trusting your gut, right? You're looking for answers all out here, anywhere you can find them. The high priestess is always a read. It's like, why are you scattering all your energy out there? Come back. Come back to who you... <clears throat> Sorry. Come back. To who you know you are and the person who has the answers. You, your instincts, your gut. Come on, an archer. An archer doesn't work off of fact, logic, fiction, this and that. That's instinct. You're shooting before you think. There's no time to think. You understand what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> For you to feel good about all this confusion and everything with your love life trying to sort itself out, for you to get through this unscathed, feeling good at the top of your game, even though it's confusing, even though there are highs and lows, you got to get back to that place, that instinctual place where you know you're the shit. 
as soon as you lose that it doesn't matter how what why nobody cares how you lost it or why you lost it nobody cares nobody can tell all they can tell is that that energy that they usually see swirling around you is not there is that anybody's fault no is that to diminish you as a person absolutely not but you know what builds that energy if you're wondering how you get it back not doubting yourself trusting yourself trusting that instinct that takes you know you know the movement the hand takes the arrow out of the quiver puts it in the bow shoots it. it's one movement fluid no thought i'm gonna put the arrow here and i'm gonna shoot it like this and i'm gonna no who does that people who can't shoot do that but you can shoot or did you forget well don't worry because most of cancer season okay is like right here <laughs> most of cancer season i'm gonna be very real with you sagittarius because it's very similar for Gemini's right now. So the laughter you're hearing where you're like, you're relating a little too much to this. I'm very sorry. It's, it's We're, you know, axis conversations here. Most of Cancer season is these two cards right here. It's like moments of like bliss where you're like, this is working out. And then moments where you're like, what in the actual fuck is going on? Like there, this doesn't make sense. So there's two ways you can interpret this. You uh, the most important way the only well some would say the only way. You need to trust yourself. You need to trust your gut, even if what the external is looking like is not that. And and the card is explaining it beautifully. You need to trust your gut because the external is not looking the way you think it looks anyway. You're not seeing things straight, so you can't go by what you see. You can say I'll trust what I see, but the card is telling you you can't trust what you see. So hold up, trust yourself, trust your gut, trust that part of you, you know, that just knows where to put the arrow, where to shoot. And you, and if you know people who live in this space, who just, you know, some people operate in this space, they're just always right here. You ask them anything, they're like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I live for I don't know why why what happened today? Why didn't you go to that thing? I don't know. You just didn't go? Yeah. Why? I don't know. So you just like do things even though you don't know why I'm you're doing them? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cuz I cuz cuz cheat code, simulation cheat code. Yeah. I don't need it to make sense. I trust that feeling whatever that is whatever that is whatever that part of you is i was just having this conversation with a pisces listen to me i was just having this conversation yesterday with a pisces whatever that feeling is that you get in your gut that is like uh-uh or it's like uh-huh you notice that that feeling is never wrong Yes, it may take a long time, it may get diluted, it may get bastardized along the way because people are so fucked up to each other. But you notice how that initial stomach jump that you have about something is not, that's your gut brain talking, right? You notice how some people you just like from your heart, you don't really know even, there's a logical reason for why you like them. You just, your heart opens to them. That's your heart brain. That's those neural cells we found in the heart. There's, you know, thinking with your heart. You know, listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Heart brain, gut brain, mind brain, different brains, different parts of the body, all working together. What, what, what to produce a superior instinct, bro? Something you can trust. That's the gut. What's the gut brain? That's all those microbes, right? In your gut that like think for themselves. They say that we eat what we eat because they want us to eat it. We go where we go and spend as much time as we do outside and consume what we do and drink as much as water as we do because they want it. They're very interested in staying alive, it seems like, no? Your genetics, some would say, most, 
Most scientists would classify your genes as a thing that desperately wants to live and then creates these kind of muscle and tissue houses to propel its seed forward into the future. Definitely wants to live. Definitely comes with some sort of instinct to keep itself alive. Seems to be doing great so far. What's your heart brain? You know when you just, your heart keeps telling you to do something? Usually when you feel bad about something, when you feel guilty, when you've done something wrong. You can call it your conscience. You can call it a lot, you know. You know that one person you have in your life that you just love irrationally? <laughs> For a lot of us, it's our children. Your heart brain. Your heart brain understands people in a way that you could consciously never, which is why it only opens to certain people. And then there's your mind brain. Your mind brain, the one that wants to make straight angles out of everything and gets so very confused and upset when it doesn't go that way. I suspect people in New York want people to be more straightforward in relationships the way our streets are set up, all up and down, numbered, east to west, north to south. I suspect people who live on the winding plains with winding roads and creek beds perhaps aren't quite so direct in the way they love each other. Anyway. You want to make straight lines. Your mind brain does at least, and there are no straight lines to be made. So why don't we concentrate on your psycho-cybernetic settings instead? I know I'm throwing a lot of terminology at you, but you know what? Sometimes, Sagittarius, all you need is to talk to somebody smart. You got the rest of this figured out. Even when it hurts, you got it. But it doesn't hurt to talk to somebody who knows a couple of things you don't know, you know? Or, better than that, what's better than hanging out with someone that knows shit that you don't know? You know what's better? Someone who knows shit you know, but can look at it in a different way and have you see it in a different way. That's fun. That's what you need to do. That's what's going on. It's cancer season. This is what you need to do to survive it. Hmm? Now let's talk about what needs to happen in general. This is this is survive this. The up and down, the oh, the high of the tide, the low of the crest, the, the crest of the wave and the no 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 survive it. Rise. Not rise above, recede back. Back back back. Bef what is this? The black and white, the black and white, the duality of the world. This is the simulation. The ones and zeros, hmm? The mine the binary code that controls all these light atoms running around pretending to be matter, pretending to be solid. It's doing a pretty good impression, this one. What happens when you sink back behind that? You start to see things not as they are played out in light and shadow, in the duality of things, but as they really are. And the doors of perception are cleansed, right? Yeah, yeah, I know you're thinking it. It's William Blake shit. Man will see things as they are, not how he perceives them to be. Your perception is cloudy because cancer season is fucked up. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. It's like cancer season is just wild. Emotionally, oh my God, the ups and downs. Anything you think about too long manifests in the most terrible way. And you're just like, ah, I often feel like cancer season is like all of us are stuck in that movie, The Abyss. No, not The Abyss. The Abyss was dope, though. Um. Not The Abyss. If you haven't seen The Abyss, you should watch it. It's fucking dope. Uh, the Sphere. No, it's not called The Sphere. It's called Sphere with Sharon Stone. I often feel like all of Cancer Season is just the movie Sphere. Um, so what can you do with that energy? You can, like I said, you can stay stuck in your head and get all the fears manifested and just have like a 
riotously good fiery run around in circles time you know on your horse shooting arrows in a circle at a target that is not moving uh that is not real this is what this means this is a hard card for you to get because it, what does a sagittarius need their sight what does an archer need? Their sight. What does a horse need? Their sight. If you want a horse to do what you want it to do, what do you do? You blind its sight. Mm. The universe is like, you're not seeing straight. You're going to end up running in circles, shooting at nothing. Or you're going to hurt yourself. Hold on a second. You're getting caught and hit by these waves. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Proceed back. Remember, what's behind this play of light and shadow, this up and down? This is a game. Fall back. Remember who you are. Remember, here we go with the psycho-cybernetic settings. What is that? It's a book by Maxwell Maltz. If you don't know about it, please look it up and please listen to the audiobook. And then you can go and look at my podcast and listen to the different episodes about psycho-cybernetics. Okay, thank you. So it's your settings. What's a cybernetic system? It's your temperature control. It's the autopilot on an electric car or an airplane. It is when you set a machine to do a certain thing, and if it deviates from doing that certain thing, it is programmed to correct itself and bring itself back to that certain thing. For example, 70 degrees in a room. Temperature control means I set it at 70. If it gets too hot, the air will kick on. And if it gets too cold, the heat will kick on. But either way, it'll stay at 70. That's a cybernetic system. You have a cybernetic system. It's a psycho-cybernetic system. And it was created when you were very, very young. And if you're going through right here, right now, it's cancer season telling you, hey, you got a little, you got a couple holes in your cybernetic system, and uh, I'm the season of manifestation. You can make anything happen in my season, so how about we take a look at that and we fix this real fast, and then you can rock out. Right? All right. You're going to decide how you meet the world again in November. Because the thing is, if you're not situated by the 28th, when Jupiter retrograde begins, right? If they're not situated with this, and it's still confusing, it's not here yet, it's still over here, leave it alone until your season. If you try to push between the 28th and November, you're just going to encounter pain. Because when the retrograde starts, it won't be a good time to get into a relationship with anyone, especially not if it's already been confusing. So instead of pushing, 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 especially through Leo season, like somehow you can make it happen, you, you can look into your settings and figure out what led you here and fix that and face the pain of it and be renewed and walk into your season in November feeling amazing. And if nothing else, at, at the very least, new. But if you push during Jupiter retrograde, if you push to try to make things happen or try to make people feel a way that they don't feel or that they maybe feel but they don't want to say whatever it is that's going on with other people if you try to push you could be using that energy you know to push financially and make a killing really you could make so much money if you redirect this energy because it's very potent and it doesn't have to be sad. How do you know that whatever's going on for you right now wouldn't work out better in November? You don't know. But we do know that Jupiter retrograde is a time of reshuffling for you in a way that financially can very much benefit you. And if you waste that energy on other things that are not ready, cooking noodles in cold water is not ready. So why not take that heat and use it where it can be used? I think that's more than fair, right? More than fair. Now those psycho-cybernetic settings that we're talking about, 
and the gaps in them, when you confront it, it is really painful. That Nine of Swords is real. And it's going to bring up um, something that I wanted to talk to you about anyway. And then we'll shuffle through for the extended after we have this little talk. <laughs> it's nothing bad. So for some of you, this is nothing bad. For some of you, I don't know. I don't judge. I don't know. The point is, if there's something that you're doing that you know you shouldn't do, you should stop. And I know it's not that simple. And I'm not talking about the heavier things that are not in your control, perhaps physically not in your control, medically not in your That's not what I mean. I mean the things that you know you can stop doing and that you're ashamed of anyone else knowing that you're doing, but you're still doing them. And you know that they're toxic for you and that they make you feel bad and they make you feel gross but you're still doing them if you can get a handle on maybe just getting rid of one of those things maybe there is only one of those things if you can get a handle on that i think the next couple of months you'll start to have these moments where you're like oh, it's so great I stopped doing that because now that would have meant this. Or, oh my God, I can't believe I actually stopped doing that just last month because guess what? So this is the perfect time because you know that whatever you're doing, if, if you're doing anything at all that is like secretive or somehow like shameful or something, to you, not to anybody else, who cares what they, you, you feel like you want to hide it. You don't. Either don't hide it or stop doing it. Because the next couple of months are setting you up for a level of exposure that I think could cause some tumult in your life if you don't get in front of it. And that's if, I don't know if you've noticed, but that's my whole shit. It's like, I want to get in front of things. So get in front of it, you know? It's much easier to dodge the car when you can see it coming. <laughs> It's different to be in the car driving it, trying to hit people. You understand what I'm saying? Huge difference here. <laughs> okay. Let's shuffle through for your extended. I like how blunt this reading is, and I don't think I say that enough about the readings when it comes to the different signs. The cards always fall with such a finesse when it comes to how to talk to you guys. Like, this is a very straightforward reading to the point that it's almost a little bit, like, harsh. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's harsh. You know? Um, but it's honest. It's very, very honest. Um, and I think that it's the easiest way for you to process information, too is for someone to be blunt and straightforward and honest because obviously that's how your brain works, you know, and you're not hypocrites. So you can, you dish it, but you can also take it. So, you know, there's, um, I think clarity comes in many forms. But the kind of clarity one gets from someone saying, here are some modalities that may help you emotionally deal with whatever is going on. I think for your particular sign, that is one of the most helpful forms of communication, especially when you are going through something. So the cards for the extended are the Seven of Swords, the Queen of Cups, the Three of Swords, your card, and the Page of Pentacles. And then we're going to pull... The Ten of Pentacles, the Five, the Ten of Swords, sorry, the Five of Pentacles, and the Six of Swords, and the Wheel of Fortune. So we'll talk about these in the extended, which you can find on Patreon right now. Like I said, Patreon's the easiest way to get the early video, which was out like five days ago. This video, the extended, because they just show up in your inbox and it's very convenient. You don't have to do anything. So the Patreon link is below. Or you can just go to the actual video on Vimeo and buy it there. 
and that link is below. If you're interested in getting a live one-on-one -on -one reading, like over FaceTime, there is a link for July 11th. That link is below. If you're interested in a personal reading, that's just like a recorded five-minute reading, that link is below. And I'm happy to announce the Summer of Revolution Tour. We're hitting LA tomorrow. You can watch it online. You can buy tickets to watch it online if you like. If you can't make it, it is sold out. July 9th, inshallah, Denver. Tickets are still available, but they're selling fast. And you can also buy tickets to watch it online. New York, August 14th, inshallah. Tickets still available, almost sold out. Also, you can watch it online. August 19th. London, okay? <laughs> London, okay? August 19th. Inshallah, inshallah. And then, oh, sorry, August 14th, New York. Yes, August 19th, London. I'm like forgetting dates here. And then, boom, 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 rounding it out, finishing it off, Miami, August 27th. We may add an early September date for the Bay. Come back around to the West Coast. But for now, those are the dates. All the links are below. Please come out. It's such a good time. We just do question and answer all night. It's kind of like three hours of comedy, three hours of astrology, three hours of crying and hugging and talking about problems. It's three hours of just like this, except that you could talk back. <laughs> it's really fun. We've been doing it for years. Uh, started off in Oakland. The first one was in Oakland. Like, it's just, it's become a thing. Um, and I love you. And I hope I see you there. And I'll see you in the extended right now. All the links are below. Love you, love you, love you. Don't worry about that. I'm going to talk to you. Well, I'll see you right now.